Kim, what is our first main topic today? All right, guys, our first main topic is coming from Martin Voch. Greetings and salutations, John. Sad news today. As the director of one of my favorite movies, Dallas Buyers Club has passed away. John Mark Vallee was just 58 years old. He went on to do amazing television with Big Little Lies and Sharp Objects, getting a lot of awards and attention. I also really liked Wild and Demolition and wished he had done more films after those. We lost a really great storyteller. Thoughts? You know, every once in a while uh, on this show, we need to talk about the passing of an icon, of a yeah. legend. But normally, the, the, the good news is we're also celebrating a long life well lived. Mm -hmm. You know, like somebody in their 80s or 90s or, or whatever. Still, It's still very sad, but... A uh, good Canadian kid, uh, Jean-Marc Vallée, uh, just died at 58. Apparently, he was at a, 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 his cottage uh, outside of Quebec. Beautiful country out there. Mm. Um, at least, you know, when he passed away, he's probably surrounded by beauty and everything. We don't know any details about his passing or how he passed right now, but very, very sad to hear. And this dude was an amazing storyteller. He knew how to take very human stories and translate them in, in such ways, whether they're based on real life events or incredible gripping kind of drama, mm -hmm. he did it on both mediums on the big screen and on the small screen. The dude just knew how to do it. This comes to us from the folks over at deadline who write the following. He followed up Dallas buyers club with an adaptation of Cheryl Strayed memoirs wild, which he did with Reese Witherspoon, which starred Reese Witherspoon and Laura Dern. The film was nominated for three Oscars. Then Valet turned his attention to long-form television series, and the results were seminal. In 2017, Valet received DGA Awards and the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Directing for the HBO limited series Big Little Lies, which he also executive produced. In total, the series won eight Emmys and four Golden Globes. He also directed and executive produced the HBO limited series Sharp Objects, which was nominated for eight Emmy Awards. And then you go to the other things like Wild was mentioned, Demolition, which he did with Jake Gyllenhaal, which is kind of an underappreciated little film. This dude, just everything he touched got amazing critical uh, response, great audience response. Big Little Lies is actually one of the bigger momentum kind of T talked about water cooler television projects in the last 10 years. I mean, everybody was talking about Big Little Lies that was going on, and they, it attracted all the biggest stars to be in, of course, Reese Witherspoon, uh, Nicole Kidman, on and on. And it just did such, it was so good. And then as you go through each, whether it's Wild or Demolition or Big Little Lies or Sharp Objects, which he did with Amy Adams, you know, it's always rooted in real human experience. Mm-hmm. And he was just, he never had to do a comic book movie. He never had to do a big flashy action film or super funny comedy, although eventually it would have been great to see him do those. But the fact that he was able to pull out this kind of quality, this kind of stuff um, on such a consistent basis when he did it, the fact that we have lost him at just the age of 58, when really we, we probably still had 30 years of this guy's storytelling ahead of us. We probably still had 30 good years. And uh, for him to pass away at this stage, again, I, we don't know any of the details, and I, so I don't know. So it doesn't really matter. But right now, it's just, it is a day of loss. We've lost a guy who has shown he was probably one of the better storytellers in the business, and we didn't get to see where he would go from here. And it's really, really sad to see. Did you watch, you know, much of his stuff, whether it's, by the way, I should mention, with Dallas Buyers Club, what's the one thing I always talk to people about? What is the number one job of a director? The number one job of the director is to get the best performances out of his actors to and guide his actors, his or her actors, into the best performance possible for that film. Well, what happened in it? Oh, just won two Academy Awards for his actors. He got Matthew McConaughey his first Academy Award. He got Jared Leto his first Academy Award. Uh, Jennifer Garner... Oh, Jennifer Garner. <laughs> is awesome in everything. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer Garner is also yeah. awesome in that. And, you know, best picture attention, all that kind of stuff. I mean, we've been talking about all the stuff other than Dallas Buyers Club, but yeah, I mean, Dallas Buyers Club, what mm -hmm. he was able to do there. Anyway, Kim, you know, what of his work stood out to you and, and your thoughts on his passing right now? Yeah, per I really loved him. 
as a director because I feel like he took stories, especially when you think of Big Little Lies, something that could seem on paper like a telenovela. So much drama. Really, yeah. there's this much backbiting in this. But he pulls out the humanity. He examines it. He kind of takes it apart and finds the underlying issue that we all can deal with in our life experiences with family and trauma. Then he puts it back together, sets it in the actor's hands. He trusted his actors a lot. He trusted Trusted them to kind of find your way with this character. Let me just let you, I, I listened to a lot of interviews and he would kind of just let his actor like, okay, I want to, he'll tell you, I want you to do it like this. And then another take, just kind of play with it and let me see where you go. I think that's when a director gets some of the best performances is when there's that right. mutual trust. But for me, um, demolition was very personal because my first experience with grief and loss, I didn't, I wasn't grieving the way I thought I would. And when I saw Demolition, it was one of those movies that made me kind of cry about the issue for the first time right. because I related to his character, um, Jake Gyllenhaal, Dave, Dave, Dave Davis, I think. I related to him because I'm like, I feel like that's what I'm going through, you know, acting a little odd and kind of destructing things. And yet you still haven't cried yet. There's this interesting... Um, part in the movie where Jake Gyllenhaal's in the mirror and he's trying to force himself to cry. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. the little kids are like, what are you doing? And I, but really that moment, it, it really connected with me on a personal level. And that movie came out during the time I experienced my loss. And I just really appreciated the way he told that story. Cause that's what you want as an audience member. You want to see a film and go, I connect with that. I feel that. And you want to say, dude, how did you take that page out of my heart, out of my brain and just put it there? That's what you want from an author. That's what you want from a director. And he did that. Um, and again, when I, I, uh, having never met him, having not known him, obviously a little bit of a kinship, good Canadian kid and everything like that. It's just as a, as a film fan, you feel that, that, God, the guy who gave us Dallas Buyers Club and, and Wild Demolition and Big Little Lies and Sharp, we're not going to get any more from him. And he was really just getting rolling because he never found a success and then just started taking any project he could. You know, he was always very calculated. He was always spacing out what he was doing. And I think we've really lost out a lot. So, so all of our thoughts and best wishes to anybody who did know uh, Jean Valet and, and, and the work that he did and everything and our best thoughts and wishes to everybody. Anyway, guys... What are your thoughts on his passing and what is your favorite uh, project or piece of work that he did? Jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.